You know what that was? What? That was a full half hour of the Stan Freeberg show played backward at high speed. <laughs> How would you like to hear it played forward at normal speed? Please. <laughs> this is the fifth show of the series of a brand new radio series. From Hollywood, we present the Stan Freeberg show. With the music of Billy Mann. Plus the songs of Peggy Taylor with Doris Butler, June Foray, Peter Leeds, and Judd Collins, Rhythm Airs. You may not find us on your TV, because in case you did not know, we're being brought to you on, brought to you on, brought to you on. Well, here it is, our fifth show already, and it's certainly been wonderful you folks to tune us in. You notice I didn't say, invite us into your living room? Uh, we try to meticulously avoid saying that kind of radio cliche around here. Uh, we also try to avoid saying, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio, or perhaps an uh, old clock on the wall says it's time to go, or maybe, and now a word from our sponsor. On second thought, I'd rather enjoy uh, saying that one. <laughs> Any of you fellows out there in sponsor land who would enjoy having me say it, uh, be sure and write, even if it's only a contract. <laughs> Mr. Leeds, if you please, would you read the news bulletin? Uh, certainly, Stan. Thank you. From the wires of our news service. A brightly burning, unidentified object lit West Coast skies from Los Angeles to Portland, east to Salt Lake City in Boise, Idaho. Police at Wairika in far northern California, near the Oregon border, reported it appeared to be a small egg-shaped object which gave off blue sparks. A county sheriff's officer said hundreds of observers reported having seen a flying saucer. Thank you. Now, I don't know how much stock you folks put in that story, but within a few hours of the time the object was sighted in the small town of uh, Wairika, California, was it? That's right. Uh, Wairika. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, flying saucer actually landed and was captured by Mr. Leroy Phipps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, what was that again? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, just how did you find the saucer, Mr. Phipps? Well, I found it next to the carrots. <laughs> I came in for dinner. I was hungry. Mm-hmm. I sat down in the breakfast nook, and there it was, next to the carrots. Must have flown in the window. I see. I thought it was an unusually large Hubbard squash. <laughs> Hubbard squash, eh? Well, how, how did you... I had it all buttered up. <laughs> Just sure I was going to partake of it. And then, all of a sudden, it started making a noise like a little teeny Dixieland band. Well, I'll bet that pretty nice scared you out of your boots. No, I was not wearing boots. <laughs> no, no, I mean, were you alarmed? Well, uh, I thought it was an unusually musical Hubbard squash. <laughs> I'll say that for it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what happened then? Right after I thought it was an unusually musical Hubbard squash, you mean? Yes. Well, right after that, I'd given up eating supper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lid popped open and a teeny little man with an antenna climbed right out. Well, that's pretty fantastic. Just a moment, Mr. Phipps. So where's the saucer now? What do you think this is? I'm holding under my arm. Well, I didn't know. Here, so set it on the table there. All right. Set uh, it down. Yeah. <coughs> Gee, it's still buttered up. Well, yeah, certainly. I ain't give up hope. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, I don't see any man with an antenna. Well, he was there. Yeah, well, just a moment, Mr. Now, wait a minute. All right, you don't believe, don't believe me. It. I'll go get my wife. Yes. No need to bother your wife. Hmm. <laughs> Certainly is a strange-looking object. Wait a minute. It's starting to glow. What's this? Gentlemen, this is amazing. Bring that other microphone over here, please. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the saucer is now giving off rather blue sparks. Now a little door is opening. A little man is coming out. I believe, uh, I believe he's going to speak. Take me to your leader. <laughs> No, oh, that's the microphone. I'm over here. <laughs> Are you an Earth man? <laughs> yes, I am. What did you think I was? I don't know. I thought you were an unusually talkative Hubbard squash. <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I partake of you? No, please. <laughs> uh, my name is Stan Freeberg. Actually, where are you from? My name is Orville. I'm from the moon. I got a letter from my sister. She was on your show two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, Miss Jupiter, huh? The girl with the shapely wheels. <laughs> Sir, I'll thank you to leave my sister's wheels out of this. I'm sorry, it was rude of me. Do uh, all the people here look like you? Well, no, not all of them, no. Because it's quite a disappointment to me so far, I'll be honest. <laughs> Probably we can fix that. Just a moment. Peggy Taylor, can you over here a moment, please? Why, sure, Stan. <laughs> you see there, Orville? He's a nice-looking boy, isn't he? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I hadn't exactly thought of her like that. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk with you sometime, Orville. By the way, what made you decide to leave the moon? Well, I didn't care for the climate. We had this stuff in the air. It was a kind of a mixture of smoke and fog. <laughs> The politicians tried to blame it on the exhaust from the flying saucers. <laughs> but uh, actually, it was caused by the green cheese refineries. <laughs> I see. Oh, they kept promising to do something about it, you know, but they never did. <gasps> Big business, you know. I got tired of my eyes burning and came here to Los Angeles to get away from it. <laughs> oh? You think I'll like it here better? Well, I wouldn't send your laundry out for a while. <laughs> hey, Freeb? Yeah? How about an introduction to the tomato? Tomato where? Orville, that's a typewriter. <laughs> I'd like to see that in a bikini. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Don't knock it if you haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be on his show again sometime, Orville. You have a refreshing point of view. I'd have to sell my saucer and move in with you. You think I could get a good price for it? Oh, I think so. It's nearly new. <laughs> I bought it from a little old lady on Saturn who only drove it on Sundays. <laughs> it's about uh, 30 light years to the gallon, you know. Well, perhaps we could sell it to a science fiction magazine. Oh, come on. You don't believe that stuff, do you? No, I... <laughs> I don't believe that, John. Neither do I. Come, <clears throat> I'm going to sing. I didn't know you did. Huh. Come off it, Freeb. On the interplanetary network, I'm known as the voice of cheese. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I know that spaceman over there. Hey, all dog! <laughs> That's Billy May. <laughs> sure looks like all dog. <laughs> May I sing now? I have a song for my relatives back home. Fine. Hit it, Aug Aug. Everybody on yon twinkling star, doesn't matter on which one you are, if you're digging me on your radar, hello out there, hello. Take it, brief. Though you are a strange and weird old race, if you are equipped to fly through space, pay a little visit to our place. Hello out there, hello. Take it, thank you. If you got nothing else to do, just rev up the rocket. To pocket, to pocket. If you've a pair of wings that you attach to a sprocket, fly on down. Don't you let appearance worry you. They are pretty funny looking too. Anyway, in case I'm coming through, hello. Out there. Hello. <laughs> La 
last week we had the pleasure of presenting Dr. Herman Horn, the noted electronics scientist, in the first of three lectures on hi-fi. Last week we had such wonderful hi-fi demonstrations as the mating call of the aardvark, Luella Parsons putting ketchup on a clam sandwich at the Brown Derby. <laughs> Goodness knows what fascinating experience is in store for us tonight. And here he is, that man about electrons, Dr. Herman Horn. Yes, thank you. By way of simple explanation to the layman, which is a polite way of saying cloth head. Ah. <laughs> uh, Hi-Fi brings out everything that is on the record. Little subtle things like piano overtones, harp vibrations, clicks, scratches, surface noise. <laughs> all the things you couldn't hear before and amplifies them with magnificent clarity. <laughs> yes. Hi-Fi, of course, stands for high fidelity and no home can be without it. In spite of what your wife says, ignore it. Ignore it. All women are troublemakers who would like to take the money their husbands need desperately for a new and better speaker and selfishly squander it on things like shoes for the children, <laughs> homogenized milk, or perhaps a second dress. <laughs> they, they can sit there and watch their husbands suffer with old equipment which has been obsolete for at least a week <laughs> and deny him the new theater playback system he needs so badly. Shameful, shameful, Mrs. America. Comes now the contest. If you could guess the sound we are going to play, you win a life-size, full-color, inflatable latex rubber Liberace. <laughs> he comes in a sitting position with arms extended, ready to be blown up and set down at your very own piano. <laughs> okay, Strudelmeyer, blow him up. Gee, that's realistic. <laughs> well, certainly looks like Lee. Well, on with the contest. Here is an ordinary sound that you hear around the house every day. What is it? <laughs> Give up. That was Benny Goodman in a skin diver's suit, 20 feet underwater, playing Danny Boy in a kelp bed. <laughs> Too bad you missed. Well, try again. What is this? Well, you get it? That was King Farouk in a skin diver's suit, 20 feet underwater, applauding Benny Goodman. <laughs> Comes now the last sound. Could you guess it? That was the sound of John L. Lewis giving his eyebrows a crew cut for the summer. <laughs> Better luck next time. What a shame. Nobody won. All right, Strudelmeyer, let the air out of the latex piano player. <laughs> right. Now, just a word about the care of hi-fi records. You've heard the expression, cleanliness is next to high fidelity? <laughs> well, all right. When you get home from the record store, wash the hands with surgical soap before removing the record from the plastic envelope. 
Uh, rubber gloves and face mask are optional. <laughs> Next, approach the machine on tippy toe. You shouldn't raise no dust. <laughs> to show you how good a sterile record sounds, my assistant Strudelmeyer is going to play a dust-free, surgically clean LP, but has never been touched by a human hand. After he gets through with it, it still ain't been touched by human hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the edges, handle it only, Strude. Strudel Meyer. It works better if you remove the plastic envelope first. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little better. Well, you did it that time, Strudelmeyer. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, under the Hi-Fi Oath, Section 22, Paragraph 18, Strudelmeyer must be destroyed at once. Get a big fire going under that oil, Strudelmeyer. I want it boiling! Unfortunately, we will not be able to continue with Dr. Horn's speech due to the fact that he seems to be cooking something on the stove. <laughs> but he will be back again next week with more fascinating information on the subject of high fi <laughs> For a... Pardon me, Stan. Oh, yes. So what is it, June Foray, as they say in radio? Uh, do you mind if I go home now? Well, uh... uh... I don't have any other bits coming up. I know, but I'd like to have you stick around. I mean, why do you have to dash off? Is this your bowling night? No, that was last night. I want to get home and look at something. You mean on that little box with a screen? Yeah. Sorry, you know the rules here in Radio June. Oh, oh sorry. come on, Stan. Let's deviate. Well, if you insist, we just happen to have one of those things in my dressing room. <gasps> you do? Shh, don't tell anybody. Come on. Gee, I didn't know CBS Radio would allow one of those things, Miss B-Y-L-D-I-N-G. Well, don't spread it around. Gee, a whole ten-inch set. <laughs> yeah, I'll snap it on. Gee, it sure is funny looking. Yeah, I had it made up egg-shaped. CBS Radio just thinks it's an unusually pictorial Hubbard squash. <laughs> well, believe me, I won't tell him. Hey, we're just in time for my favorite band leader. You mean Bubbles? I think he's fading on now. Good, I like him. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, friends, Sim. Now, we've... Now we've been getting lots of cards and letters from you folks. From you folks out there in television land. And we surely do thank you for, uh, For, uh... For all the cards and the letters from you, uh, from you folks uh, out there in television land. <laughs> Starting us off tonight is our trio, the Lemon Sisters. And girls, so what are you going to sing? We're going to sing, thank you for all those cards and letters, you folks out there in television land. Lant. Lant. And apropos a number, uh, a one and a two and... Thank you for all those cards and letters You folks in television land We wonder where this television land is Could it be a cup in the mouth from where Disneyland is? <laughs> 
bubble machine. Turn off the bubble machine, please. Somebody. Folks, folks. Just a moment. I'm sorry. Hold it just a moment, please. Turn off the bubble machine. Please, turn off the bubble. Thank you, Lemon Sisters, for that lovely number. A wonderful, a wonderful number. <laughs> now on the way to the show. There's that man with a deep, deep voice, Larry Looper. <laughs> now, what are, you, what are you going to sing for us, Larry? I'm going to sing, uh, thank you for all those cards and letters. I'm, I'm sorry that number has been taken. Well, I'll sing the funny old hills, then. Good. One, then two, then. I'm happy on the prairie all the day, singing Lady Olay. Lady Olay! Funny old hill sing back to me. Hold it just a moment. Hold it. Bubbles don't come till the end of the program. Please turn off the bubbles. Turn off. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry Looper. And now I would like to play a short instrumental medley based on the names of the girls. A one and a two and no, no, that's not it. Thank you so very much. I hope you enjoyed that short instrumental medley. <laughs> now here's that young man about town from the bass section, Stony Stonewell. <laughs> sing, please. Please, take a little into my please. Just a moment, please. Hold it. Just a moment. If I don't count off the number, we can't hope to start off neatly. <laughs> Here we go. A one, and a two, and... See how lovely that turned out now? Please, and your little bit to my feet. Let the rain get to my feet. Help me, that's your love, please. What is the matter with that machine? Just a moment, here. Hit it, hit it with your horn. That's got it. That's got it. Thank you, Stony Stonewell. And now, hit it. Hit it again. Hit it with the horn. Hit it. Stick your mouthpiece in it there. Hit it. A wonderful, a wonderful. Wed to the show. Here, here's our champagne lady, Alice Lean. Now, what are you going to sing? I am going to sing Wonderful, Wonderful, and now on with the show. Ha <laughs> ha. That's just a little laugh on me. And I got a little laugh on you when you get your paycheck this week. Alice is going to sing Moonlight and Shadow. So one and two. Ladies and <laughs> some gentlemen, for the first time in 25 years, my popping finger is caught in my cheek. <laughs> will, you get, will you give me a hand, Alice? Pull on my arm. Pull on my arm. No, the other arm. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Ow, my ears. A one and a two. And... Moonlight and shadows and you in my arms. And 
and a melody in the bamboo tree, my soul. Everybody out. Just a minute. Somebody stop with the bubble machine. The whole ballroom is filling with the bubble. Where are you, Alice? I'm shaving. It's figures. I can't see the cameras. Here, let me get the accordion down on the thing. And I'll try and fix that thing. Bear with us, folks. Just one moment, please. See, the time is running out, and we haven't even played a polka. Hold it, boys. Just a minute. I didn't mean... Hold it, Alice. Don't polka on my accordion. <laughs> Gee, Dad, it was a whirlet, sir. <laughs> it's the theme, boys. <laughs> and so it's good night from all the champagne. Where's the cameras? Music make turn off the bubble. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, take your foot out of my accordion, Al. And so, friends, Al. Sam Freeberg show is produced in Hollywood by Pete Barnum and is written by Sam Freeberg and Pete Barnum with original songs by Sam Freeberg. Featuring the music of Billy May, Judd Conlon for the Mayors, and the songs of Peggy Taylor with Dawes Butler, Peter Leeds, and June Ferre. Bud Sewell speaking. Oh, people, people, do you know what next Sunday is? No! What is next Sunday? Next Sunday, we have set aside one minute as a time of universal tap dancing. At the given moment... People around the world will put aside their differences and tap dance side by side for one minute. <laughs> At the given time, stop. Get out of your car, step out of your houses, wherever you are, and let's tap dance with our fellow man. If you can't tap dance, don't just sit there. Snap your fingers. <laughs> or at the very least, hum tea for two. <laughs> we'll have microphones... <laughs> We'll have microphones set up around the world as each country joins in. That's a week from tonight as we set aside a time of universal tap dancing. Let this, then, be the first move toward international brotherhood. <laughs> Until next week, this is Stan Freeberg saying, brush up on those taps. God bless you for listening, and good night. <laughs>